Hello YouTube, Cave Dweller 1959. Gonna play with a muzzle loading rifle barrel one more time today. The last time I showed you how to cut that off, square it, crown it, file your shape to it. Today I'm gonna show you how to just dress up it, dress it up just a little bit, make it different than the one your buddy has. You can do this on an existing rifle you already have. You can do it. This is a new rifle I'm building at the moment. It's going to be a 50 caliber flintlock when it's all said and done. This is nothing more than something I've been playing with. The spacing on it is way off, so it was obvious I needed a jig. I cannot eyeball it that close. This is my jig. All I've done is taken about a three foot dowel, rubber band my center punch to it. The other end, I've taken some masking tape just to take up some of the slop. My spacing here is not right, so what do we do? Masking tape, one more time. We're going to take up a little bit of the slop and adjust the point of impact, basically. Kind of like setting my sights. A little more, a little more. I might want to say this is not a time to be in a big hurry. I'm going to give it, once this is done, it's done. There is no going back unless you cut your barrel down, shorten it one more time. Where I want these at, from the bore to the flats, I want to be just on the outside of what the center line would be. And I'm going to put them on the high spot. About right there. I'm going to call that good. I like that. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to eyeball it off of my high spot. Pull it toward the outside. I'm going to give it a very, very light, light tap just so I can see that indent. And the reason for that is if there is a mistake made, I can go back with just sandpaper, take off ten thousandths of the barrel, which is very, very, very minute a bunch. If I was to give it the final tap right now, try to do the finish in the first tap, and something was wrong, you would end up taking a file and shortening your barrel by quite a bit. Which it's a whole lot nicer to do it right the first time. Light's not very good on that one. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to shut the camera off a little bit. I'm going to reload my coffee cup. I'm going to really, really study this, and if I'm happy with it, I'm going to show you how to finish it back in a little bit. All right, uh, I've given this a good once over. I'm more than happy with my spacing. I'm more than happy with the complete pattern. We're going to finish it up. We're going to take that center punch. This is not going to be a one-time thing. I'm going to probably hit it three or four times. Keep looking, keep looking. We're just going to go around the clock. Try to hit it with the same amount of pressure. I got a torque wrench, but I do not have a torque hammer, so this is all just by guess and by golly. Of course, when you hit that, that excess metal has to go somewhere so it comes up. So it comes up, we just take it off. Of 
course, all our sandpaper ends up going somewhere. Kind of gives you a false reading. Not bad. We're going to do her one more time. This on a new barrel like this, when it gets browned out in the end, nobody will ever know when it was done. If you're doing it on a new barrel, there's more than enough uh, different kinds of bluing, cold bluings that are on the market. You're going to sand off everything. Most of them that I've dealt with work pretty well. They'll never match a hot blue, of course. How many times you go around and do this is strictly up to you. How deep, how large do you want? A little more sanding to get it completely done. That's what we're looking at. All told, that might have taken me 10 minutes. Thanks a lot, YouTube. If you like my videos, I appreciate it if you subscribe, press the like button, pass it on to your buddies. Have a great day. Cave Dweller, 1959.